just to welcome you. I'm not sure if there's even anyone there to welcome, uh, but just to welcome you. Uh, this is a venture from Kilmala Parish, and uh, we're here in the parish. We've been running our, our masses and rosaries online from the church. So this is our first venture somewhere different that is Wi-Fi that hopefully won't let me down because my phone is dying. But basically this venture uh, came from the people who were always asking for suggestions as to what we can do. And they asked, you know, we pray for, for the people on the front line as such, be it doctors and nurses, healthcare workers, hospital chaplains, paramedics, guardi, the army, those who work in pharmacies, those who work in our shops, all those who are responding to the needs of others at a very difficult time. So that's what this prayer service is, is to do, to offer a moment of prayer. Now, uh, and so just to welcome you, if there's people who have been part of a, an online praying community, and if you're new, you're very, very welcome. If you're one of those first responders, you're even more welcome because our parishioners wanted to pray for you and maybe pray with you and give you an opportunity to pray if it helps you along the way. So whether you can or you can't, don't worry, we will be praying for you. But we thought it might be nice to give you a chance to breathe because it must be hard facing into some of your days now. Hard not to feel overwhelmed by it all, hard to feel a little out of control and out of, out of your depth as such. Uh, there's a lot of worry at the moment. Worry, obviously, for yourselves as people who are responding. Worry for your family and worry for others. So this prayer is an opportunity to thank you and to reassure you that you'll be prayed for. Uh, we wish we could do more, and if we can do more, let us know. Also, it's an opportunity to, to give you a chance to breathe. The quotes that are on, on our PowerPoint are... God is love and God is breath. Every real experience of love is an experience of God. And St. Maximus said God is breath. God is as close to us as our breath. And you, you know yourself, sometimes you're so frantic you can't catch your breath as such. Well, this is an opportunity to give you to breathe, to know that each breath actually brings us closer to God when we actually get to focus on it and let it center us and ground us. So it's an opportunity to try and breathe in that breath of God, his healing, his life, his love, his peace, and to breathe out the worry and the anxiety and the concerns and all the franticness that goes with this time. So we're going to start with an opportunity for you to breathe. Uh, for some that you're used to that, but it's good for you. It's just grounds us and helps steady us in the midst of difficult times. And so, if you're not used to it, just, I, I'd encourage you to, to just breathe in through your nose. Sit upright as such. They always say, sit, sit well. I'm not good at sitting well, but sit well. And just breathe into your nose and out through your mouth. I know for me I say the name Isa. But just do that. But to make it easier for those who'd find sitting in silence and just breathing difficult, we're going to put on a piece of music and some pictures. So just take it as an opportunity to breathe. And even if it's not breathing, just an opportunity to give your head space. Now, this is all very much homemade and make and do. So I have to go turn off lights and I'll put on a little slide.
And so we pray for you and with you as we pray. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And so just uh, I'll share with you a, a gospel from the Gospel of John. So we pray the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down with his disciples, seeing the multitude coming to him. Jesus said to Philip, How are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? Philip answered, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a small boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what is that among so many? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000, not to mention the women and children. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distrib distributed them to those who were seated. So this also with the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over. That so they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five bar barley loaves and two fish. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I chose that Gospel because I suppose Jesus was encountered by the multitudes. And that must feel overwhelming for you. Uh, what was, some of you might have heard the line that the men sat, uh, the women there listening and praying with us are probably going, that would be typical men sitting down. But anyway, it was uh, where Jesus reached out to many. And there's one of my favourite lines in scripture is in that story, but I'll come back to that. But just to link in with that story, I'm going to share with you another story. This story is about uh, Margaret Mead. Margaret Mead, you'll see there, is a famous anthropologist. And once in one of her lectures, she was asked, a student asked her, what's the first sign, the earliest sign of civilization? And they had a few suggestions themselves. They said, was it an early axe blade? You know, was it that? Or was it an arrowhead? Uh, was it a, a fish hook? Or was it something more sophisticated even? And much to their surprise, Margaret Mead said it was a healed human femur. She explained that at a time in early civilization when the law of survival of the fittest reigned, a broken leg spelt certain death. The person couldn't hunt, fish or escape enemies unless they had help. She went on to explain that a healed leg bone is physical evidence that someone cared. The person wasn't abandoned. Someone else gathered the food for them until their leg was healed. Someone cared for that person until they were able to care for themselves. Someone showed compassion. And so, in the eyes of Margaret Mead, one of the great anthropologists, she said this act of compassion was the first sign of civilization. Tonight, we give thanks for your constant acts of compassion the way in which you are caring for so many people. And we know that's not easy. And tonight we give thanks for that and we pray for you and we ask God to bless and protect you in what scary times and difficult times. And just as Jesus fed the multitude, the disciples actually in another gospel said, send them away. And Jesus said no because he had a heart for people. Uh, and then the, Andrew said, but there's a small boy here with five loaves and two fish. Surely that won't be enough. That's my favourite line because five loaves and two fish seems very small and insignificant. But actually, in the right hands, it can make a big difference. So we pray this evening that when you feel overburdened and overwhelmed, that you can trust that the five loaves and two fish as such that you have to offer can make a big difference. We trust that your compassion will be strengthened and softened and helped along the way and that you will find the grace and the strength that you need to trust that whatever you do can make a big difference. 
So we pray for you in that and we bring our prayers to God as we pray. Lord, we pray for the church. We pray that the church will strive to be a source of hope and light for its people at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for anyone watching and listening. We pray for your families, neighbours and friends. We pray that all will be well and that we will be there for each other. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who live alone or feel isolated. We pray that they will receive the support and encouragement that they need from neighbours and friends. Lord, hear us. So we pray for people who work on the front lines, doctors, nurses, carers, paramedics, chaplains, guardi, army, people who work in pharmacies and shops. We pray for you and we pray for your families. We thank God for your dedication and care. We pray that God will bless you and keep you safe and your families as you bravely and generously care for the sick. Lord, hear us. And we pray for those who are sick, those who are unwell. I'm very conscious of a woman in intensive care in Limerick. So we remember all the sick, those at home, those amongst us, those you, you, you encounter every day. We ask God through you and your goodness and kindness to let the warmth of his healing love flow through them and give them the healing and the grace and the strength that they need. Lord, hear us. And so we just pray for you. This is a prayer, I suppose, of a person on the front row. So whatever position you fill, we pray for you in, in your role. And we pray, Lord, please help me to bring comfort where there is pain, courage where there is fear, hope where there is despair, light where there is darkness, assurance where there is anxiety. May my touch be gentle with tenderness, patience and love. Lord, bless and strengthen me with your love and peace and keep me and my loved ones safe. Amen. And then that's just a prayer that you might pray, but here's a prayer we all pray for you. So we pray, Lord, give these people the courage of mind and strength, of courage of heart and strength of mind and body. Keep them safe from harm. May they know our deep gratitude for all they are doing to heal and help those affected by the coronavirus. God of all consolation, may they know your protection and peace. Bless them in their challenging work and bless their families who worry about them and who miss them. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so just finish with a, a prayer that we can pray together. It's called I Am Only One. I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And what I should do and can do, by the grace of God, I will do. So we pray together for each other, especially for those working on that front line in so many different ways. We pray for you and your families. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And we pray God's blessing on you this evening. We pray an old Irish breast blessing that says, May your shoulders, may the touch of the Holy Spirit be on your head. May the sign of Christ's cross be on your forehead. May the breath of the Holy Spirit be in your lungs. May the vision of heaven's company be in your eyes, the conversation of heaven's company on your lips. May there be a home for God in your heart, and to God the Father of all, we offer your entire being. And we ask God to bless us and heal us and hold us in love today, tonight, and forever. Amen. And we'll finish with a, a piece of music, and I might just share a, a thought after the piece of music, but don't worry if you have to go on your way, uh, we'll play this piece of music for you. Just reminds us, I suppose, that we are the body of Christ and we ask God to bless you as you strive to be the Christ body 
to those around you, which is very demanding. So we ask God to help you in that. Sorry, as I say, everything about this is a, a little homemade, well, very much homemade. Anyway, just for those who have joined us, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, our hope is that if this is of help, we're going to be continuing to pray for people who are, are caring and putting themselves out there every day, trying to care for others. So we want to pray for you as you do that. If something like this is helpful for you, we could try and do more of it. We're open to suggestions. Just please let us know if there's any way we can care for you and pray for you as you care for others. So just for those who've joined us, uh, to thank you very much. We pray that you'll stay safe and well and God bless. And may Almighty God bless us with his healing and his love and his light and particularly his peace. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.